Okay, um, here is the next part of the t tutorial. Sorry, I couldn't finish the parts yesterday. My headphones had to charge because they are wi wireless and I don't have a laptop so I don't have a microphone on my laptop. <clears throat> but we were here to, um, or we came to that we were going to add markings to this cat and shortly I use not very many colors in this because it might take a lot of time like if I'm going to add uh, tons of shades of brown in this and it just takes too much time for me to record and you would probably not watch it anyway so I choose a little bit lighter color like this and I zoom in to make the markings. As I have mentioned in the last part of this tutorial, I am just making or drawing a random cat and I'm just adding markings as I feel like. And <clears throat> You could, if you want to, just simply use the bucket tool and fill it like this. Then it would be sharp colored. Or you can use the gradient tool. Remember to put it on a transparent gradient like this. So it won't get like this because of the secondary color there. We use this transparent one. And uh, yeah. If you set the point here and drag it until there, that's where the gradient ends. And if I put it like this and like that, here the lightest would be also the, that color would be here where you put the first line. And um, the gradient will end or fade out where you put this second uh point. So you go use this. This looks okay. Control D, deselect it, and then you see we have soft edges because we have an anti alias checked up there. If you want to have anti anti alias checked then you could I'm just gonna show then it would get pixelated. Wait no wait I forgot to uncheck that. Um now if I do Y, um, if I now draw something like this, fill it with the color, say the edges will be get hard and pixelated. Um, to soft, if you want to soften these edges a lot more, you can use the blur tool. I have the strength at the hundred percent because if I have it like on fifty, it, when you get Photoshop, it would be standing on 50 or we put to 50 and then you have to blur a lot on the same places to make it as smooth as you want if you want to make it really smooth or you can use the smudge tool on a small size because there is small hairs around in the face here to make it look like fur but I'm not gonna do that because that takes forever and uh, more markings to this. We all have some markings here. I select. I select big areas um, in parts. Like for an example here. Then it's easier to select it in parts if you have if you're using a mouse. If you're using a, ta a tablet, then it's kind of, then it might be easier if you have a steady hand. I am not talking because I am concentrating on drawing. I'm sorry, I'm so quiet. 
Um, so these markings are just completely simple. And now I forgot to check the anti-alias. I am such a dumb person. Why can't I? Oh yeah, there we go. Um, I can just pause this and come back when I'm done with the marking. Yeah, I added just a few markings here and there. <coughs> and uh, for doing nose and stuff, I use another layer. I'll just give it a cute pink nose. Because pink noses are cute. And uh, yeah. for the ear and stuff, I use gradient tool there to yay for not saying anything in a tutorial like this. Okay, now we're done with markings and stuff and doing eyes. I have my own style for that and I'm not going to use it in this tutorial because I don't want people to copy it and uh, yeah. So I'll just do a simple eye style, very simple one. Probably the most simple eye style I have never, I mean, ever made. That moment when you mess up your English during a tutorial. <laughs> anyway, um, now I have selected that and we'll give this dude green eyes because that is pretty. We'll give him yellow eyes. <sighs> Extremely simple eye style. Some light in screw this This, this is a cat. He has his eyes. I think he forgot what he was in English. And uh, now we go to this white dot here because it is a wet surface. Surface. It has, it is kind of, then we have a dark outline, like this. Remember to save or you'll lose your drawing. Okay, now we have done markings and everything. And since I put this in a group, I can just simply right click and press merge group and then we have the cat in one there and now for simple shading and lighting um 
I guess I will do that. Um, I will do the main shading and stuff in the next video. It's starting to get long. Okay, for a small explanation, when I used to shade, or what I used to do while I shade, is that I do the background before I shade, because then I can decide where the light is coming from. Or I just look at the eyes where those white dots here are. They decide kind of where the light comes from. Which makes it easy for me to shade and um, shade along or to make the shading match the background. Shading before you make the background to kind of shade af to kind of make the background after the shading. It is quite hard and I have tried both of the methods I used to shade before I made the backgrounds but then I tried to shade after I made the backgrounds and then I found that a lot more easier. So remember to say Control S then you have saved it and then you won't lose anything if yeah probably explained that in the first part but just gonna say that again. If you remember to save each minute each five, fifth minute or eight minute, then you can, then you won't stress with, uh, with like it, or you won't get lose any progress on the picture. If your computer crashes, if the electricity breaks down, or if the program decides to lag or it won't reply or anything like that. So, <clears throat> remember to save, very important, doesn't matter if there's, if you're drawn something uh, completely crap, uh, or drawn something like you're very proud of, especially if you're drawing something that you're really proud of, you should save very often. Um, yeah, next part, soon up.